Today, I'm going to talk about mass balances, which is a very fundamental concept for modeling a lot of different types of systems in biomedical and chemical engineering. So first of all, who do you think this guy is? This creepy looking guy with the funny nose and the creepy eyes. Well, if we're talking about mass balance modeling, it's probably going to have something to do with mass. It's going to be Avogadro. Avogadro had a made his constant where he talked about a mole of molecules as a constant number of molecules. You don't need to know have, have to know a lot about moles for this topic. Just realize that it's a, an amount of stuff. If you're currently in chemistry, you've probably you've ha, probably had some chemistry in the past. And you've heard about moles of molecules. We're going to talk about concentration, which is measured in moles per liter, and that's about as far as we're going to go along that topic. So the basic equation is accumulation equals the sum of the n minus the sum of the out plus the sum of the created minus the sum of the destroyed, which means these are all rates. So the accumulation rate is equal to all the stuff on the right hand side. And we're going to write these, this type of balance equation for each volume of interest, each control volume we're interested in, and each species in each of the volumes. So that is how we're going to base all of the equations are going to look like this, but they're all going to be different when we're modeling different problems. Let's start off with a very simple example, just a mixing tank. If we have a flow rate coming in at a certain volumetric flow rate, say liters per seconds per units, there's a concentration coming in in moles per liter. We have just a tank, flow in and flow out, and a flow rate out. So we have a flow rate in, flow rate out, same volumetric liters per second, concentration coming in, it's mixing in the tank, and the tank has volume V. So whatever's in here, if it's well mixed, this well mixed assumption, that means that whatever's in here comes out through this pipe at concentration C. So it comes in at C naught, it mixes up, everything in here is C and everything flowing out is C. So as we're mixing things, we're not changing volume, we have constant properties for density and this, that, and the other. So basically we have flow rate, volume, flow rate, concentration here, different concentration, which is actually the same as the flowing out. So the stuff in there and stuff flowing out is the same. How do we attack this problem? Well, we first need to know the total of mass of stuff in the tank. We know there's no reaction going on, but the stuff flowing in is a flow rate times a concentration. So if this flow rate is in liters per second, this concentration is moles per liter, this is a rate of mass flowing in not mass, it's actually molecules, moles per second. We call it mass balances. So a flow rate times a concentration gives you units of moles per second. The rate leaving is F in liters per second, volumetric flow rate, times concentration, moles per liter, gives us Fc, not Fc naught. They're both in moles per second. So the right-hand side of our mass balance is just the N minus the out, which becomes Fc naught minus Fc. I like to describe what is exactly changing with time, so I put in parentheses T from my problem previously. It didn't say it there, but a lot of times we're going to say the flow rates are constant, so the concentrations can change. We're trying to solve for, say, the concentration in that tank. But we don't have the accumulation term. If you know the total amount of material in the tank, which is a volume times a concentration, if volumes in liters and concentrations in moles per liter, that gives us V times C, which is going to have units of moles. How does that change with time? Well, if we take a derivative of that VC term, V dC dt plus C dV dt. But we said some assumptions, flow rate in equals a flow rate out, so D, the volume won't change with time. That guy goes to zero, and we end up with V dC dt. So this tank is a constant volume. You put some stuff in, it pushes some stuff out. What is changing with time? Well, that dc dt term, the rate of change of concentration. So our overall balance for this whole model, simple mixing tank model, is v dc dt, the rate of change of c, is equal to the flow rate in times the concentration in minus the flow rate out times the concentration out. And that's all we're doing to make a model of this simple system. Now, if we knew F and we know V and we know the initial concentration or the concentration coming in, we could try and solve for the concentration in the tank flowing out based on this equation. 
Let's do a reaction equation now, where we have basically the same thing. Flow rate in at a certain concentration, now it's Ca0. Flow rate out, since it's constant, volume is going to also be F. So we have this tank, stuff flows in, stuff flows out. But now we have a reaction, A going to B. So the reaction rate tells us how many moles per unit time are reacting. So this is a volumetric reaction rate. The units on that reaction rate, we have a reaction rate coefficient K, concentration. So the overall units on this are moles per second liter. But most of the time, our rates were moles per second or moles per time. So we don't have the total reaction rate. That's going to cause us a little bit of trouble. So we're not changing volume, dilute species, constant properties, well mixed, a lot of the assumptions we have going on. And the only thing we've done is add this reaction where we're converting A to B. So if we do a balance on species A, we already know the flow rate in gives us this rate, FCA naught moles per second. The flow rate out is FCA moles per second. The total amount of mass reacted, we knew it was KCA moles per second liter, so we have to multiply by the volume. So this is a volumetric rate, you multiply by volume to get VKCA, which is going to give us moles per second. So now all of our rate terms have the same units. So the overall species for species A, the balance in this control volume, is the volume times DCA DT, the rate of change of that concentration variable, flow rate in, FCA naught of T, minus FCA of T, flow rate out, minus the total reaction rate, which includes the volume, volume times K, CA of T. And that models this slightly more complicated reactor. And again, we'd have to know some of these values to solve for CA. What about B? We don't have any B coming in. It's pure A, but we're creating B, and it's flowing out. So there's a concentration of B. It's well mixed in the reactor, so whatever flows out, flows out at concentration B. So that species balance, again, we have an accumulation rate, V times DC B DT, but we have no flow rate in, we have a flow rate out, there's a negative sign there, but now we have a reaction rate for production of B. It's increasing, we have a positive term there. In the previous slide, we had a negative term. We were consuming A, so the previous slide we had a negative term for consuming A, but now we have a positive term for producing B. One mole of A goes to one mole of B, and they do that at the same rate. So when you consume A, you're producing B, and that becomes one of our terms. Now, just to redefine some of these, a control volume is the actual boundary in the reaction system. It could be a tank, it could be the cytoplasm of the cell, it could be an organ inside the body. Assuming we will have to make some of these assumptions like constant volume, well mixed, those kinds of things in most cases. A chemical reaction is transforming some molecules into other things, into product molecules. And stoichiometry tells you how many reactant molecules it takes to produce a product molecule. But generally, we're not going to mess around with changing those values for stoichiometry. For this class, these topics will probably just do one molecule of something produces one molecule of something else. So the reaction rate is the rate that the chemical reaction proceeds. And volumetric rate and total reaction rate are different. So read the problems and look at the units. The transport rates are the rates that move in or out of a control volume. And sometimes it's a flow in a pipe, sometimes it's a diffusion rate. The accumulation rate is the rate of species changes in a control volume. So that's that left-hand side of the model equation. Let's do a simple cell model where we have A diffusing into a cell. B is diffusing out of the cell at this rate, and there's a reaction rate inside the cell as we convert A to B. So it's like a tank, but now we have a different expression for the, the transport in and the transport out. We're also assuming constant volume, well mixed. These are all, both not always a great assumption for most systems, but we have to do it to make the math simple enough for us to consider. We're not changing volume for these dilute species when we have reaction, all these things, constant properties. These are typical assumptions. So we have the simple, simple cell, the simple volume, and two concentrations, A and B, A going to B. We have this flow rate in and this flow rate out. It's not really a flow rate, it's more of a transport in, transport out with a diffusion coefficient. So we have a diffusion coefficient and a difference in concentrations between outside the cell and inside the cell. We have a diffusion coefficient and a concentration of B inside the cell and outside the cell. And notice that those differences, CA prime minus CA, CB minus CB prime, those are always going to be positive numbers for the most part. We're assuming there's more A outside driving it into the cell, and the concentration of B is higher 
than it is outside driving bee out of the cell. So that diffusion, that difference, typically forces stuff when we're having diffusion rates across a membrane of some sort. And those signs can always flip-flop, but generally we're going to assume one direction for diffusion. So when we model this, it's a very simple model. For A, we have the accumulation rate, V, D, C, A, D, T. Most of our accumulation rates are going to look like that. It's going to be moles per second. This diffusion rate, describing the concentration outside the cell, concentration inside the cell, and this reaction rate. To get the total reaction, we have to have V, K, C, A again. So we flow in at this rate, and we react and consume with a negative sign at this rate, and it gives us the accumulation rate of A. It tells us if CA is increasing or decreasing or staying the same. For B, we have the same, but now we have diffusion out of the cell. So as it diffuses out, since we're doing a volume bounce on the volume inside the cell, it's a negative sign, but we're producing B, and the rate doesn't depend on B. It only depends on concentration of A, just like the previous Reaction rate for A was VKCA, as we convert A to B, that's how it works. So we have a DCBDT. This equation describes the rate of change for the concentration of B inside the cell. At steady state, these concentration rates, DCDT, would go to zero. And we could look at, at steady state, what sets of equations, the right-hand sides, all equal zero. So that summarizes some of the ideas for mass balances. These were all examples that only have a single control volume, so a harder problem would involve multiple control volumes. So you have, let's say, two tanks, or a cell and the cell nucleus, just different things. One thing I did forget to say, in this problem we don't know anything about the volume outside the cell. We just know the concentration of A prime, C B prime, or concentrations outside, so we can't do a balance on all liquid outside the cell. We're only doing species balance in this single control volume. That's something to think about when looking at other types of problems. What do you need to write a balance on? What are the control volumes? What are the species of interest? And what are all the rates that are involved?